Don't you want devoted followers who leave their families for you, give their money to you, give their bodies to you, give up their lives for you, consider you God, and will kill for you? Don't you want to become a cult leader? Since the death of God, there's been a vacancy open. You could fill that void. Here's how. Structure your cult like an onion with the most benign and helpful features on the outside and the most controlling, kooky, and evil parts at the secret inner core. Three times the words, O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Each brother in the circle takes the sister of his left by the right hand in the patriarchal grip. Each of you bring your left arm to the square and rest it upon the shoulder or arm of the person to your left. Those in the circle will repeat the words of the prayer. Hosanna! 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 To God and the Lamb! Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to God and the Lamb. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to God and the Lamb. Amen, Amen, and Amen. Use deception. Don't tell them who you really are. Lie. Leave out important information or distort information. Let's talk about Mitt Romney. Okay. The man who may well become the most powerful man on earth. Mm -hmm. As a Mormon in the temple, I've been told, he would have sworn an oath to say that he would not pass on what happens in the temple lest he slit his throat. Is that true? That's not true. That's not true. We do not have penalties in the temple. You used to. We used to. But don't be stupid about it. Start slowly. A good con man takes a little bit of truth and a lot of lies and pulls the wool over the eyes of the ignorant. Induce trance states and self-hypnosis by practicing thought-stopping rituals and repetitive acts like dancing, spinning, singing, we love the leader, the leader is love. When I'm not with him, I feel like a schlub. We love the leader, the leader is love. When I'm not with him, I feel like a schlub. possessed by evil spirits, or suggest that if they should ever leave, something bad could happen to them. You have left all of my kingdom and my greatness and glory. Now you want to take possession of the whole of it. I have a word to say concerning these people. If they do not walk up to every covenant they make at these altars in this temple this day, they will be in my power. And chanting. Stand down, down. Stand down, down. Stand out down. Stamp out doubt, stamp out doubt, stamp out doubt, stamp out doubt, stamp out doubt. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, first, doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. Don't you want to become a cult leader? Don't you want devoted followers who leave their families for you, give their money to you, give their bodies to you, give up their lives for you, and will kill for you? I will die for the cause. I will kill for the cause. I love you. I love you.
one morning before day, I was woke up by firing of guns and learned that our camp had been attacked, we supposed by Indians. Some of the men folks were wounded. When dawn came up on the 7th of September, 1857, they were attacked by a group of Mormons and their Indian allies. The Mormons who were visible were painted as Indians, and the Arkansans really couldn't tell who was attacking them. The men dug a ditch around our camp and fortified the best they could. The women and children got in the ditches and were comparatively out of danger. The fighting went on at intervals for six days. When failing to drive our men from their fortifications, the attacking party went off. But for five days, under increasingly brutal conditions, 120 men, women, and children resisted this assault and a siege. During that five-day siege, more Mormons are recruited from Cedar City. They come out, probably in the neighborhood of 50 Mormons, though most of them disguised as Indians. It must have been Indians. terrifying for the Arkansans to travel through Utah. My impression is that they tried to get as far away as quickly as possible. And then to be attacked under the conditions. I thought to myself, what would I do if I was in that position? What do I do? My family's here. My children are here. It's chilling. And then when you walk out on that land, it's even more chilling. And you think that men, women, and children were there for four days with no water. And once you stand on that ground, you can imagine how that looked like a lifeline coming to them. To see fellow Americans show up and offer to save you from these hidden attackers, it must have been a tremendous relief from a, a week of fear and suffering. The white flag, the Judas symbol, whatever you want to call it, is what makes this even more powerful a story. They weren't killed in their barricades fighting. They went having to trust their fellow man. It must have been unbelievable. As the Mormons turned to shoot them down, it must not have made any sense whatsoever of why they were being murdered, why these people were so angry, why their blood had to be shed. And the women, women with babes in arms and small children and, and trying to escape across that broad expanse. What may be at the core of this awful tale, that it is such a stark confrontation with human evil. And what makes it especially haunting is it was an evil committed by people who believed they were doing God's will.